Are you struggling to bond with your bird? Are you having a hard time getting them to trust you? Stick around, because I'm here to help. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well and you're having a fantastic week. In today's video, I'm here to help you with getting your bird to trust you and you bonding with them. It can be a long process. There's no right or wrong amount of time for it to take. There's lots of things on social media and the internet saying, it should take this long or your bird should love you immediately and a lot of the advice out there is absolute rubbish so i'm here to help you and set you up for success with having a loving relationship with your bird now my first tip with building trust with your bird is one that drives me crazy which is don't expect an instant bond with your bird it doesn't matter if you get them as a baby it doesn't matter if you get them as a rescue it doesn't matter if the breeder tells you they're silly tame and they love people that bird doesn't know you. Birds can tell the difference between different people and they have different relationships with different people and they are going to know that you aren't the person they were with before and they need to get to know you. That doesn't mean you're not an awesome human, of course you are, but your bird needs to get to know you. If you were just dumped in a room full of people and expected to be best friends, it's probably not going to happen. You need to build up a relationship with that bird. You need to tell them that it's okay. You're going to listen to you. You are safe uh, and I'm not going to chase you around or do anything to scare you because they are a prey animal after all and they can be really nervous in different situations, especially when they move home. They're coming to a new person, a new family, new sights and sounds. There's so much going on. They're not gonna love you instantly, that's normal, that's okay. So don't be disheartened if your bird doesn't immediately want to come out and play with you and want scritches as well. The next really important tip to bear in mind is to respect and understand your bird's body language. Now each individual parrot species will have some differences but there are some generalities as well when it comes to body language and you need to get yourself clued up, do a lot of research and understand what different body language cues mean. It's very easy to misinterpret a bird getting excited and being, you know, having fluffy feathers and rushing around but actually that bird could be quite agitated and overstimulated. Uh, my partner, the parrot teacher, David, he has green cheek conyugal guides and cockatiel guides all about bird behavior and what the behaviors actually mean by physically showing you and they're really valuable resources if you have those two birds but they're still worth watching if you have a different species because you may find some similarities there as well to interpret that behavior one thing we also don't want to do is what we call anthropomorphizing our birds that's where we put our own human emotions and attributes onto them because that can also set them up to fail a good example of this is if your bird really wants to cuddle you and snuggle you and they're hiding in your top and being really cheeky like that and they you know want all these pets all the time and they're hiding in all these dark places you may see that as being super cute and they're being cheeky but actually there's some pretty clear signs that your bird might be getting hormonal which can then lead to undesirable behaviors such as biting and screaming and other things like that so it's really important to know what your bird's body language means and what to do about it now the next uh, point I wanted to make, which is often overlooked, but so important, I cannot stress this enough, is passive bonding. Passive bonding is where your bird has just come home, they're in their nice big cage, in their safe space, because we like to see a cage as a bedroom, it should be just as fun in there as it is when they're out and about. When they're in their cage, in their safe space, they've just come home, they don't know you yet, they're a bit unsure of their surroundings. What you want to do is come and sit near them, and then just kind of do your own thing. You could watch one of my YouTube videos, read one of our blog posts on bestbehavebirds.com and just do something that isn't interacting with that bird. Don't look at them, don't try and chat to them, don't kind of invade their space, just be in their presence. And the really cool thing about this is it gets your bird used to your mannerisms, your voice, your body language as well. And they can understand that, okay, this human's coming close, but they're not gonna grab me, they're not trying to attack me, what does this human want? They can kind of get to know you. Now, it's obviously very exciting when you bring a bird home for the first time, everyone wants to just get it out straight away and start interacting, but actually it's kind of a bad thing. It's something that we don't agree on with advice that we see out there because your bird has just come home into a new environment they have no idea what's going on it's super stressful and then when you force yourself upon them to interact that's no good either you want a little bit of time for them to just understand what's going on in their surroundings their new space uh, there's just so much going on so it's a really stressful experience when they first come home so see if you can do some passive bonding where you're kind of in their space but also ignoring them because that's really really valuable it gets them to start trusting you because they know that every time you come up to them it's not always going to be to interact and they can kind of get to know you at their own pace now tip number four is to be very slow and calm and obvious with your movements again as i said they are 
prey species. They can be very nervous in new surroundings. Of course, there may be some uh, confident birds out there who couldn't care less, but generally speaking, they're gonna be kind of nervous, kind of scared, kind of stressed. So if we can be quite slow in our movements and quite calm in our body language and kind of whispering away sometimes to them, that can kind of create a nice calm environment. If we come in all, you know, crazy and rushing around, oh my goodness, I wanna play with this bird, oh, this is so exciting. They're gonna be like, wow, what on earth is going on? That could even lead to some overstimulation as well. And we don't want to be seeing that, especially when they first come home. We wanna set them up for success with the right kind of attitude, the right environment as well. And that helps by keeping them calm and keeping keeping them relaxed too. Now, when you're going to start interacting with your bird and doing some training, we highly recommend using positive reinforcement training. That means adding something to the environment to increase the likelihood of a behavior. That means when your bird does something you want to see more of, give them a treat. Very simple. And of course that needs to be a treat they find valuable and you want them on a healthy diet as well because if they're getting a diet of very unhealthy things and then you try and reinforce them with those treat foods, they're not gonna want it because, you know, why would they wanna take food from scary humans when they've got it for free in their bowl? So if they're on a nice healthy diet, for example, maybe with their breakfast, they've got vegetables and soaked and sprouted seeds, grains and legumes. And then maybe with pickles, I want to do some training. I would then use some hemp seeds or some sunflower seeds because they wouldn't be freely available in her bowl. They'd only be from me. And when you are providing those top tier reinforcing treats, that's when you're gonna have a really great relationship with your bird because they're gonna to wanna to work for you. I like to use the analogy for me. If somebody wanted me to work for a salad, I'm probably gonna say no. If somebody wanted me to work for a pizza or for some chocolate, I'm gonna be more motivated because those are things that I find reinforcing. Now, obviously don't feed your bird chocolate or pizza, but just as an analogy, every bird is gonna find different foods reinforcing. Make sure they're still healthy, but of course, make sure they're on a healthy diet as well. Now, as well as this, you want to introduce target training with your bird. And if your bird is still super scared of you and they're struggling to trust, you can target train through the cage bars if they're in there. You can present the target stick, and even if they don't approach it, if they just look at it, great, you can drop a little treat in their bowl and walk away. Perfect, they've interacted in a way where they're curious. If your bird's running around freaking out, take it a step back. You can break any simple behavior down into teeny tiny little steps. And of course you can do target training outside of the cage as well. It's fantastic to do because it creates a clear line of communication between you and your bird. They know they've got to touch the stick for a treat. You know all you want them to do is touch the stick for a treat. It's important not to reinforce for any biting of the stick because then you're telling your bird you want them to bite things really hard. You want them to be super soft and gentle. And this can lead to other fun behaviors like spinning and waving and recall and all different kinds of things. It opens up a whole world of communication with your bird and lots of training too. The next point is what some other trainers will say, which is every interaction is a training session. I do agree to a point, but I like to just kind of attribute it to your bird is always learning. It's learning from every experience. It's learning that it's gonna be more likely or less likely to want to interact or do something based on the consequence of experience. So if you are grasping at your bird and backing them into a corner because you want them to step up and you're pushing your hands on them to step up, they're gonna be less likely to want to step up because you've scared them because you've pressured them with a forced interaction. Whereas if you try and uh, train the step up in a really voluntary and cooperative way where you're saying, hey, if you come close to me, you can have some tasty snacks, you're more likely to get a step up because you are respecting their body language, you are considering their needs, and also you are giving them an incentive to step up. And the incentive is better to be something they want more of rather than something they want less of. If they are stepping up because they're avoiding that pressure on their tummy, that means that they're in some kind of discomfort. We want to kind of avoid that as much as possible. We want to be using that positive reinforcement to encourage them to do things we want to see more of. Now I've already mentioned diet and how important that is with kind of setting your bird up for success in a health way, but it is also really important as we mentioned too, to make sure you are offering the right kind of treats for their reinforcement. Say for example, if I offered Pickles Millet for training, she'd be like, Mm, I don't really fancy that, I'll take it, but I don't really kind of care either way. Whereas if I offered her sunflower seeds or hemp seeds, then she'd be more motivated. Conversely, with my cockatiels, chip and fish, if I offered them millet, they'd be like, yep, let's go, I'm ready to train, or hemp seeds as well, they're like those. But if I offered them sunflower seeds, they'd say, absolutely not, I'm not taking part, that's not worth my time. That's why it's really important to do what we call a treat hierarchy test, where you lay out a selection of different treats uh, across maybe a piece of paper or on a sideboard, or if your bird isn't kind of coming out yet, you can do it in a bowl in their cage. See what they go for first, second and third. And then you can reserve those treats for training and foraging. 
My next point is really, really important, quite a serious point, and that is don't punish your bird. It's not a nice way to have a relationship with any animal or person. Punishing your bird is not gonna get you the results you think it is. I'll give you a few examples. If you spray your bird with a bottle of water in the face because you don't like what they did, maybe they bit you, all that's gonna do is make them scared of having a wash. And obviously we want our birds to be bathing regularly. And if they then become scared of water coming close to them because you're just spraying them randomly, that's not gonna get you the results you want. You need to work through biting in a different way. And of course, you can book a consultation with David and I at Best Behave Birds, and we can work through any biting issues with you. The next punishment people often do is go, no, bad bird, or any other colorful language that they may decide to choose. The thing is with parrots is they don't really know what you're saying. They don't speak your language. What they do understand is you're making a big song and dance about it. There's loads of noise, loads of excitement. Isn't this skimpy? And that just makes them want to participate in that because they like noise, they like um, that kind of thing and they can get overstimulated too. So if you're shouting and hollering, they don't understand the emotion in your voice and they don't know what you're saying. All they know is you're being really noisy and they wanna be just as noisy as you are. So you're gonna end up getting more screaming and things like that. That's not gonna help you either. And the final punishment we see quite often is if your bird is naughty, uh, people put them back in the cage. Now, as I said at the start of the video, your bird's cage is like their bedroom. It's their safe space. There should be lots of enriching things to do in there. It should be just as fun being in there as it is out and about. The cage is not a prison. It's not somewhere to go to have a time out. That's a really poor use of a cage. And again, you'll often find uh, behaviors you may not even realize are gonna happen. For example, if your bird decides they want to go back to the cage, and they bite you and you put them back in the cage, all that's gonna teach them is anytime they wanna go back to the cage, they just have to bite you and you will personally ferry them back to the cage and put them in there for quiet time. That is not a good use of a cage. The cage is a safe space to be, a fun place to be, and not a place to be for time out. So that's not gonna help you with any challenging behaviors you may find. Now number nine is slightly less important, but I think it's worth bearing in mind because a lot of people don't realize this. A lot of birds are what we call neophobic. That means they can be scared of new things and change if they aren't used to it, especially if you are trying to bond with your bird and they've just come home. So bearing this in mind, it's quite important when you are just trying to build up trust and a bond with your bird, not to change your appearance too drastically if you can uh, help it. So try not to change your hair color or your jewelry, or more importantly, if you like to paint your nails or get kind of gels or acrylics or whatever it is that people do, clearly I don't. <laughs> Beauty and that sort of thing is not my forte. Um, if you are changing your nails, doing different colors and things like that, quite a lot of birds get quite scared. They may not want to step up if you're wearing different jewelry or different nail polish colors. I like to really bear in mind again that sometimes that's that missing link that people don't realize when they're trying to bond with their birds they think, why would they step up anymore? And it's because you've got beautiful blue nails now when you didn't before. Of course you can work on this over time through desensitization, but right at the start of your relationship, you want to keep things quite consistent to set them up for success. And the final point I wanted to mention, which I've kind of mentioned throughout this video, is don't force interactions. It's not a case of do as I say or do it, you know, whether you like it or not. This is a partnership, it's a cooperation, it's a relationship based on trust and mutual respect. Your bird is not something just to force around because they're small. You wouldn't do it with a lion or a tiger or something big and scary. It's not acceptable to do it just because your bird is small. So bear that in mind, not to force interactions. Don't corner your bird with your hand to try and get them to step up. Don't force them here and there and that kind of thing. Listen to them, listen to their body language. Understand what they want. Do they want space from you? Is that what's reinforcing right now? Do they want snacks from you? Do they want to do some more passive bonding because they're not ready for that active interaction yet? You know, there's lots of different things and every bird is an individual. So it's really important to go at your bird's own pace. Just don't expect them to love you immediately. Don't force that interaction because of things that you've seen on social media. I'm not saying it's gonna take forever to build up that relationship with your bird, but the more consistent you are, the more you respect their body language and their wants and needs, that's what's gonna drive success. Really being consistent with your training as well. So that does bring me to the end of the video. I hope you really enjoyed learning how to get your bird to trust you and to bond with them. If you need one-to-one -one dedicated support, please do reach out to us at Best Behaved Birds. We offer bespoke and affordable consultations for you and your bird. And we do work globally as well, all around the world with lots of lovely parrot owners and their birds. But in the meantime, if you have any other tips and tricks, do leave them down in the comments as I would love to hear from you. But from me and Pickles and Scampi, who's waiting for his dinner. Thanks for watching. Take care and see you later.